Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's good to have you here for this virtual worship service for January 31st, 2021. As you probably already know, we had to cancel in-person services this morning due to weather and road conditions. It is good, though, to have you here and gather with us virtually so that we may worship and hear the word of the Lord presented to us. Today we'll be focusing our attention to our gospel reading from Mark chapter 1 and the authority that Jesus speaks with, both to the crowds, the demon, and to us as Christians. A few announcements before we begin our service. First, a reminder that next week we'll be having our voters meeting. Uh, that voters meeting will take place after Bible study on Sunday. And that meeting will mostly uh, do regular yearly reports as well as uh, dealing with two items of synodical business. And so I encourage those uh, who would like to be involved uh, to stick around after the Bible study and to, uh, and to hear about um, those items of business. Uh, also, 2020 financial statements are available now at the church. Uh, if you have not received one by mail, uh, and if you have not received one here, please contact Mary uh, in the office this week, and she'll be sure to get you your statement uh, to you shortly. As I said, uh, this morning we'll be doing our virtual services. I'll be putting some of the liturgy on the screen as we go through the service so that you can follow along. There will not be any singing um, or any music throughout the service, um, and so that's just for my convenience. Um, so we'll be looking again at Mark chapter 1, and welcome to this virtual service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know we live in the midst of so many dangers that in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Grant strength and protection to support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany is from Deuteronomy chapter 18. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me, from among you, from your brothers. It is him you shall listen. Just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence, and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. However, not all possess this knowledge, but some, through former association with idols, eat food as really offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged if his conscience is weak to eat food offers to idols? And so by your knowledge this weak person is destroyed, the brother for whom Christ died. Thus sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. They went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed. So that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere, throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Sanctify us in the truth, for your word is truth. Amen. Sermon text for this morning comes from Mark chapter 1, verse 22. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. So far our text. Brothers and sisters in Christ, there was a book that came out in 2018, so a couple of years back, and it was called The Death of Expertise. And the author wrote this book due to an experience he kept on having. And the author, he is an expert in American-Soviet relations. So he spent about 30 years, and most of that being during the Cold War, dealing with people on both sides of, of government, both in Russia and in America. And he is now a professor at the U.S. Naval War College, and he also teaches at Harvard. And so most people would say that this gentleman is an expert in international relations. But a few years prior to him writing this book, there was the Edward Snowden controversy. And if you recall, this was the gentleman who worked for the U.S. government, uh, published American secrets, then found refuge in Russia. And there was great controversy as to how American and Russian leaders were going to deal with this gentleman and what the consequences would be. And the author found that when he introduced himself, talked about what he was an expert in, his experience in international relations, especially American and Russian, he found time and time again that people were not ready to listen to what he said about the issues at hand, but instead were quick to say, well, that's all well and good, but let me tell you about Russia. Now, of course, what does this average Joe have in his back pocket that this expert who has spent years upon years in the field know? Well, he watched cable news and did a quick internet search and now feels like he is an expert in the topic. Now, of course, if this was just him, this expert and his experiences, it wouldn't mean much, but he began to talk to other experts in other fields. He talked to a microbiologist in France, in case it was maybe just an American problem, but this microbiologist in France said, no, it's happening to me too. People are telling me about my field as if I didn't spend four, seven, ten years in, in school and then spend 20, 30 years out in the field doing the real work. But they've got their phone and their television and their common sense, and they, they know they're experts. Now, I had this experience as well in southwest Kansas. Now, there is, of course, the general attitude of those out in the Dust Bowl that they are self-reliant and that they don't need anyone to come in and tell them what to do. And so I remember talking to one of my members and they were saying something along the lines of they don't, they don't need to listen to experts. They don't need to listen to these people who don't live here. It doesn't matter if, because they're just, they're just from the East or they're from the South. And I remember this moment where they had called in experts from, from out of town, from, from Indianapolis, from my home state. 
And the gentleman said, I don't really care what they have to say. I'll listen to them when they bring back my topsoil. You see, he was still bitter about how all the wind blew the topsoil east, even as far east as Indiana and Indianapolis. He didn't need an expert's opinion. He had his own knowledge. He knew what was best. And sure, there's nothing wrong with a healthy dose of skepticism. And it's become, even in our today's day and age, to be wary of what we hear and what we are told. Because it's been harder to tell an expert from a peddler of misinformation. Yet we do know, deep down, that we need experts. Especially in today's climate. We want experts dealing with the pandemic. We want experts dealing with a vaccine. We don't want just some guy with a phone to be in charge of all these things, these things that require experts. And so in today's text, we find in our gospel lesson one man with a scroll acting like an authority. And the people don't know what to do with him. They don't know who he is or why he's speaking this way. Because he's not just speaking like an expert. He's speaking like he knows exactly what God meant when the words were written down and inspired by the Holy Spirit. He speaks with the same authority as the text itself. And the people, they've never encountered someone like this. Sure, they have their own scribes, they have their own experts, but they don't speak with this kind of authority, this sort of expertise. And so they're amazed and bewildered and astonished by such authority. They ask, who is this person? But before they can begin to reflect on the question of who is this person, another person enters in, a man with an unclean spirit, a demon-possessed man. He walks into the room, and the demon knows exactly who Jesus is. And he begins not in astonishment, but in fear. What have you to do with us? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. The demon knows what the people don't. The demon has seen the splendor and the glory, the majesty and the might of the Son of God in person, face to face. The demon knows whom he has encountered in this little synagogue, in this small town, in the middle of nowhere. And he fears for his destruction. Yet Jesus commands the demon to be quiet. Muzzle your mouth and come out of the man. The, the demon convulses the man and leaves him. And now, now the people are even more confused and amazed. What what have they just seen? First, this man, he comes in and he reads the scroll and he speaks with this divine authority. Then demons cry out in fear before him. And more than that, they listen to him and obey his word. Who is this man? Jesus is the Holy One of God. He is the divine Logos. He is the Word made flesh. Jesus is the authority that causes all knees to bow and all tongues to confess that He is Lord. Jesus is the one who has authority over every prophet and every teacher of old. 
Jesus is the one who has authority over demons. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus, Jesus shows authority more than just right here in this moment. Throughout his ministry, Jesus demonstrates what kind of authority he has. There's another story, just a couple verses from where we are now in last week's gospel lesson where Jesus speaks two words to Simon and Andrew, follow me. And these two fishermen get out of their boats and follow Jesus. There's another story that takes place in this same town of Capernaum, not in the gospel of in Mark, but in the gospel of Matthew. In Matthew chapter 8, Jesus is in Capernaum and a centurion comes up before him in the crowd and he begins to speak to him. And he has a servant that is sick. And Jesus asks, what, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to go into your house and heal him? And the centurion says to Jesus, no, I too am a man with authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. Jesus is amazed by the faith of this centurion and his faith to understand what Jesus' authority means. Jesus can say, go, let it be done for you as you have believed, and the servant who is far off is healed. Then in Luke's gospel, we find Jesus asleep in a boat and storms crashing into the, into the boat and the disciples becoming afraid as the storm gets worse and worse. And they wake Jesus and Jesus comes out, sees the storm, rebukes the storm, and it listens to him. The disciples ask, who then is this that he commands even the winds and the waters and they obey him? Jesus speaks and the things he says happen. He says, follow me and people follow him. He says, be healed and people are healed. He says to a demon, leave and he goes. When Jesus speaks, every word carries the weight of God's authority. So what does Jesus do with this authority? Does he go out and conquer kingdoms? Does he take control of armies? Does he go on a book tour and show off his expertise? Does he go to Athens and proclaim to all the philosophers and experts about the wisdom that he knows? No. He goes to Jerusalem and he brings the reign of God. The reign of God that will use the authoritative word not for profit and gain, but to heal the blind and the deaf. The reign of God will lift up the lame and will touch the leper. The reign of God will welcome the downtrodden and the poor to sit and have a meal. The reign of God that is for the sick and not the healthy. Jesus brings this rule and reign to Jerusalem when he claims his throne, his wooden throne with three nails. And what does this authoritative word, this ruler who brings the reign of God to earth, what does he say when he is upon his throne? He says, Father, Forgive them. Forgive them. Jesus comes to Jerusalem. He comes into his throne. He comes into the holy royal city. And he speaks to the world and to God. Forgive them. The fight is over. 
all is finished. He says to you and to me that your sin is cast away. As far as the east is from the west, he says to you, I forgive you. I welcome you. You are mine. No one can snatch you out of my hand. And he says this not with some weak authority, but with the very authority of the Son of God, the Holy One of Israel. He says this with the same authority that he spoke to the winds and the seas, to the demons and to the dead. He speaks as the Son of God who created the sun and all the stars. And he says to you, you have life in me. You are forgiven. You are mine through the waters of baptism. And I will give you a future of eternal life. The question for us today is what will we do with these words of an expert? Will you listen? What more authority could these words have for you to hear them? Yet we turn away. We plug our ears and we ignore him like he's not really an expert. We act with our common sense and a quick internet search and we think we have things figured out. Like we, we know. We think we have the authority over the Word of God. We think we have the authority over our lives. We think we have the power to control what's going on around us. And more than that, we think we can tell God the way things are. And when we do this, because I know that we do this, both in our hearts and by our actions, we claim this authority for ourselves, and we think we know, we think we've got it all figured out. And I remember Job. In Job chapter 38, Job has been suffering for so long that he thinks he knows what suffering's all about. He thinks he knows what God is doing. He thinks he knows all that God is and his tales and his nature, and he thinks he's got it all figured out. And God shows up. And the Lord says to him, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Who shut in the seas? Have you commanded the morning sun since your days began? and caused the dawn to know its place? Declare if you know all of this. Job receives a divine smackdown. The same sort of casting aside that any expert can do to a fool who opens his mouth and begins to speak about something he has no idea about. A man who speaks without knowledge. What can the fool truly say before the expert? Nothing. What can we claim before God? What can we say to him that he does not already know? Nothing. We can simply listen. We can simply hear the authority, the expert speak. This is what we fools are called to do. Those who cannot govern their own lives or their own hearts, we're called to hear, we're called to listen, to sit at the feet of Jesus, the Word made flesh, and listen, listen to His words, hear what He says to you, and believe in His authority, trust in His expertise. For he was there in the beginning. He was there when the foundations of the earth were laid. He was there to command all of creation into existence. 
And he was there when it was called good. So what does he say? What does he speak to you and to me, to those who have ears to hear? He says, repent and believe the gospel. He says, take and eat, take and drink. Receive my body and blood for the forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. He says, come to the cross and find in this place the forgiveness of sins, the washing away of transgressions. Come and find salvation and mercy. He says, follow me. And as the world is forgetting about experts and disregarding authority, we will hear the King of Kings. We'll hear the Holy One of Israel speak, for he speaks concerning you and your life and your future. He calls you out of the darkness and into his wondrous light. And he says, I have baptized you. I have claimed you with my name. You are mine, and the Father forgives you. All is finished. All is done. I'm the authority. I'm the expert. Trust and believe. May all of us brothers and sisters in Christ, hear these words of Christ and hold them dear. Amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Holy Trinity, You are God of gods and Lord of lords. Truly there is no God but you alone. From you and from your Son, Jesus Christ, are all things. Reveal the saving knowledge of Christ's truth to us and all the world, that loving you and one another together, we may be known by God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, whose voice was heard at Sinai, and whose authority was made manifest in Christ, the prophet greater than Moses. Send faithful preachers into your harvest who will be diligent to listen to your word and speak it faithfully in your name. Preserve us from false prophets who would lead us away from your truth and give us ears to hear gladly the saving words of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, guard our families and homes and build them up in love. Support parents in their task of instructing their children. Strengthen those whose faith is weak and make us bold to forego convenience and security to attest the truths of our most holy faith with heart and action. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, give health and success to our president and governor, our legislatures and judges, and all who serve for our governance and protection. Make them high in purpose, wise in counsel, and unwavering in duty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son cast out unclean spirits and taught with authority. He is the great physician of body and soul. Have mercy on those who are sick, distressed, in danger, or facing any need. We name especially Emma, Anne, Mylan, Carl, Lincoln, Bill, Elaine, Ruth, Jim, John, Jeff, Chrissy, Teresa, Charlie, and Joyce. Sustain them with patience, trusting in your merciful care, and graciously relieve them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, Grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, giver and perfecter of our faith, we thank and praise you for continuing among us the preaching of your gospel for our instruction and edification. Send your blessing upon the word which has been spoken to us, and by your Holy Spirit increase our saving knowledge of you, that day by day we may be strengthened in divine truth and remain steadfast in your grace. Give us strength to fight the good fight and by faith to overcome all the temptations of Satan, the flesh, and the world, so that we may finally receive the salvation of our souls. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.